Hey guys and welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. So Ultrabooks here are by far the most popular category of laptops, providing enough performance for everyday tasks in a compact, portable form factor. But there's one crucial thing that these thin and light machines are incapable of, and that's high performance PC gaming. Most people looking to game on their PC will examine a few options. Desktop PCs are the best choice from a price and performance perspective, but they simply aren't portable and can't replace what an Ultrabook does. Gaming laptops are a portable equivalent, though they are almost always larger and heavier than an Ultra Portable for a decent level of power, plus they tend to be pretty expensive. A new option for PC gaming has started to appear over the last few years, and that is external graphics boxes, which connect to a laptop and provide the power of a fully fledged graphics card when you're at your desk, but still allow you to carry around a thin and light ultra portable on the go. A couple of options have hit the market so far, starting with the proprietary Alienware graphics amplifier, and later with the Razer Core. The problem with the amplifier and the core are their price. The core is of particular interest because it's compatible with many laptops via Thunderbolt 3, but it costs a whopping 500 bucks, and that's without an included graphics card. This makes the total cost of external laptop graphics a very expensive proposition, especially if you want decent power from something like an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070. This is where the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box comes in. It offers similar features to the Razer Core, it's an external desktop graphics card enclosure that connects to laptops via Thunderbolt 3, but it costs just $600 with a GTX 1070 included inside. The Razer Core with equivalent hardware will set you back at least $300 more. The GTX 1070 gaming box, which you can see over here, is a much more compact unit than either the graphics amplifier or the core, and that's because it uses a Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1070 Mini ITX OC, along with a slimline 450 watt 80 plus gold power supply. This does restrict the upgradability of the unit, but it keeps it small and portable. At just 2.4 kilograms, you can pretty easily carry around the entire unit with a provided carry bag, and its small foot footprint is suitable for any desk setup. Setting up and using the gaming box is extremely simple. In fact, I was expecting it to be so much harder to get working than it actually is. All you have to do is plug in the power cord, connect it to your laptop via Thunderbolt 3, let your laptop's Thunderbolt 3 driver utility automatically set up the unit with a few prompts, and then install NVIDIA's GeForce graphics driver. That's pretty much it. From there, the gaming box works exactly as you'd expect. When running a game, it automatically switches from using internal graphics to the external GTX 1070 and passes the display signal back to the laptop's display. If you hook up an external monitor, that works even better with a small performance advantage. And of course, you can use the rear USB ports to attach your keyboard and mouse. The unit is fully plug and play with no on off switch. When you plug in the gaming box, the unit will automatically power up and your setup will switch to the external graphics where required. Disconnect the box and there's a smooth transition back to using the integrated graphics. And thanks to power delivery over Thunderbolt 3, the gaming box charges your laptop while it's connected where supported with up to 100 watts of juice. I was expecting to have some sort of struggle using this device for gaming or some sort of issue with plug and play, but that wasn't the case at all. In fact, it worked perfectly with my KB Lake powered Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, which you'll see throughout this video. Oh, and there's a quick note on the noise and thermals produced by the gaming box just before we get into the performance. Under load, the box is pretty quiet thanks to its large cooling vents on either side, providing enough airflow such that the fans don't have to spin up significantly. Unfortunately though, there is a bit of coil wind from the power supply, noticeable when the GPU is fully utilized. As for temperatures, the GPU sits at comfortably around 70 degrees Celsius under load, which is what you expect from this sort of desktop graphics card. So before I get into discussing any performance information, let's talk about the test setup. I used the gaming box with base level ultra portable hardware, a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon kitted out with an Intel Core i5-7200U processor and 8GB of RAM. Aura says you wouldn't want a game with any lower hardware and I definitely agree as this is pretty much the entry level ultra portable experience. The Core i5-7200U is particularly interesting here because it's a 2-core 4-thread 15 watt CPU clocked to 2.5GHz with a boost speed of 3.1GHz. This isn't as a fast CPU by any stretch, in fact it's slower than the Intel Pentium G4560 which we recommend for budget PC gaming builds. As we'll talk about later, the CPU can often run us into a bit of trouble here. 
So testing the GTX 1070 box, I first decided to run every game I wanted to play on just the laptop's integrated graphics to see if even a single game was playable on the lowest possible settings. As you'll see in this list, a couple of games like Batman Arkham Knight refused to play at all on integrated graphics, while others like Deus Ex Mankind Divided and The Witcher 3 were completely unplayable even at 720p low settings. The only two games I considered playable were Sleeping Dogs and Tomb Raider, both games from around five years ago and only when set to the lowest possible quality. I think it's pretty safe to say an Ultra Portable is not a gaming machine, though most of you out there probably would have already known that. So let's go through what the performance I actually achieved with the GTX 1070 gaming box hooked up to my laptop. I used an external monitor for all of the gaming box testing as it provided a few extra frames per second as it didn't have to send the display signal back through the Thunderbolt 3 cable. And all the captures you'll see in this video were done via Shadowplay for convenience. Note that Shadowplay on limited hardware did come with a performance hit which you'll see in the captures though I'll be discussing my experience playing these games without the capture running. So starting off with Batman Arkham Knight, which was very playable on the gaming box set to 1080p ultra settings with no game works. The in-game benchmark spit out a 77 FPS average and flying around in the game was excellent, especially as the game simply refused to run on integrated graphics. Deus Ex Mankind Divided only achieved 20 frames per second at best on integrated graphics, but with the gaming box I pushed this up to 55 FPS with 1080p high detail settings. Switching to Ultra came with a 10 FPS performance hit, pushing into the 40 FPS zone, so I prefer to use the high settings instead. Again, a very playable experience here. Fallout 4 is the worst optimized game I tested with, so I opted to use 1080p ultra detail settings with shadow distance set to medium, which helps solve some random slowdowns throughout the game. Frame rates did fluctuate a fair bit depending on where I was playing, and neither the CPU nor GPU were pegged at 100% utilization, though I mostly achieved 50 to 60 FPS at these settings. On integrated graphics, again, the game is pretty much unplayable. Prey isn't a hugely demanding game on gaming hardware, though it's still unplayable on integrated graphics, but with the gaming box, I was hitting around 50 to 70 FPS on maximum quality settings, depending on the area of the ship I was in. This is another game that runs really well on the external graphics solution at 1080p. Of the two older titles I tested with, Sleeping Dogs hit around 90 FPS in the in-game benchmark running at 1080p ultra settings. Tomb Raider hit a playable 80 FPS, 1080p ultra settings again with 4 times super sample anti-aliasing. Both of these games were playable at 720p low settings, but the jump up to 1080p ultra with better frame rates is massive. As you might have noticed throughout many of these tests, the CPU is pegged at 100% utilization or close to it for most of the game, while the GPU isn't always being fully utilized. So with The Witcher 3 I decided to test at both 1080p and 1440p, and it wasn't hugely surprising to see just a 3-5 to five FPS drop moving from 1080p to 1440p. In fact, running at 1440p ultra settings with no hair works, the gaming box delivered around 45 FPS. I also tested Mass Effect Andromeda at both 1080p and 1440p and saw roughly 7 FPS drop when increasing the resolution and ultra detail settings. The game didn't get past the loading screens on integrated graphics, so being able to hit 45 or FPS or thereabouts with the gaming box is a decent effort. There was one game though that remained unplayable on both the integrated graphics and the gaming box, and that's Battlefield 1's 64 player multiplayer. There is a massive CPU bottleneck while playing, which limited the frame rate to around 25 to 35 FPS at all times, whether I was playing on 1080p medium settings or 1440p ultra settings. I seriously tried to play this game for a long time, but it's bloody hard when frame rates are dipping below 30 FPS. Oh, and it wouldn't be a proper look at gaming performance without mentioning eSports games. I don't normally play these sort of titles, but I did download CSGO on the laptop just to see how the gaming box could improve the experience. I was surprised to discover a not particularly intensive title like CSGO is largely unplayable on integrated graphics, only hitting 40 FPS on 720p low settings. But when switching to 1080p low settings on the gaming box, we push that well into the 150 to 200 FPS zone, which I think is what most people like to see. Aside from the unfortunate Battlefield 1 multiplayer result, the general experience provided by the GTX 1070 gaming box here is very good. It comfortably transforms the ThinkPad X1 Carbon and similar Thunderbolt 3 equipped Ultra Portables into a capable gaming machine. 
For the most part, the graphically intensive games I tested were playable at 1080p or even 1440p at high to ultra detail settings with respectable frame rates. However, many of the tests ran into CPU bottlenecks thanks to the relatively weak Core i5-7200U I used for testing. Often this left the GTX 1070 underutilized, so I'd expect you'd get a better experience with a faster Core i7-7500U, which has a 13% higher boost frequency. Even better results will be had with a quad-core CPU like the i7-7700HQ, though not many laptops without dedicated graphics use that CPU. Due to this CPU bottleneck and your expectations of gaming on a GTX 1070, I'm sure you have a number of questions about the gaming box's performance, which I'll try to address right now. You're probably wondering how the gaming box hooked up to an ultra portable compares to an actual gaming laptop with a GTX 1070 in sight. I've run a few tests and it seems that with a much faster quad core CPU and no potential Thunderbolt 3 concerns, a GTX 1070 gaming laptop is around 30 to 40% faster on average than my test system, though this margin decreases as games are more GPU limited. A fully fledged gaming desktop with an overclocked Core i7-7700K and a GTX 1070 inside will outperform the Ultrabook Plus gaming box combination by a larger margin, somewhere around 40 to 45% on average. And of course that will make games like Battlefield 1 multiplayer actually playable. I'll have a follow up video soon that will look more closely at the differences between the external gaming box like this Aorus unit and a similar gaming laptops and desktops so I'd stay tuned for that. It's also worth mentioning frame time performance. Throughout most of the testing so far, I've only been discussing average frame rates, which don't illustrate how smooth the experience is with the gaming box. Smoothness can vary a lot with a gaming box, much more than a gaming laptop or a gaming desktop, due to the inherent hardware limitations of ultra portables like the slow CPU, limited memory capacity and bandwidth and so forth. Some games run really smoothly for the most part, like Mass Effect Andromeda, Batman Arkham Knight and Prey, with only the occasional slowdown. Other games like The Witcher 3 stutter more frequently, often when the CPU is bouncing around 100% utilization. These stutters are not something I've experienced on gaming laptops or desktops, so it's something to note about the external graphics solutions. In fact, here's a frame time graph so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Again, it does depend on the game, but just be warned that you may not get a smooth experience in every game with an entry level ultra portable. I'd expect the experience is a little bit better if you happen to have a faster unit than my test system. So there's a lot to like about the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box and that all stems from the performance and price. Those with an ultra portable or other laptop without a dedicated graphics card will see the gaming box transform their system into something genuinely capable of playing modern games. And it doesn't just make games playable, you'll be able to run intensive titles at high to ultra quality settings at either 1080p or even 1440p while maintaining respectable frame rates. The gaming box is extremely simple to set up as well with plug and play functionality, making it fast to switch between a dock setup for gaming and a traditional ultra portable for work on the go. Power delivery, extra USB ports and a very compact design are great complementary features as well, though it does have some RGB lighting and to be honest it's a, it's a little bit laughable in there. The best aspect to the gaming box though is its price. At $600 with an included GTX 1070, it's a lot cheaper than the Razer Core. It even manages to undercut some other external graphics solutions by around $100, making it a highly attractive option for those looking to game on their existing ultra portable. There are some cases where I wouldn't recommend the gaming box. If you're tossing up between this solution and a gaming laptop, the gaming laptop will provide better performance in most cases at a similar price to the cost of an entry level ultra portable and the gaming box. You won't get the portability advantages, but gaming laptops are still a decent choice for some buyers. I also had a few concerns during my testing, which you should be aware of, like the tendency for the Core i5-7200U in my test laptop to cause a bottleneck and some stuttering issues in a handful of games. External graphics is still far from a perfect solution right now and your experience may vary depending on what laptop you hook it up to. In general though, the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box is the best external graphics solution I've seen so far. It should definitely be on your radar if you want to transform your Thunderbolt 3 equipped laptop into a genuine gaming machine. Anyway, that's it for this look at the Aorus GTX 1070 gaming box. Really impressed with what it brings to the table. If you're interested, you can check prices. Links in the description below. If you like our work, check us out on Patreon. And we'll catch you in the next one.